what is the role of vitamin D in ovarian physiology, its implication in reproduction. I bring readings from Manipal University, and that's the university building with four floors of library for students and four floors of administrative wing. Now we know that vitamin D is a steroid hormone. It is synthesized mainly by the skin on exposure to ultraviolet light. The biologic activity of vitamin D are mediated through a receptor called as vitamin D receptor or in short form VDR. I don't like short form because all my students know we are again short forms in, in practice, but anyway, that's what is accepted short form here. Now, when we know that vitamin D is basically the active one is the calcitrol, the one on the right side. So basically the inactive one or the major circulating form gets into the active form by another enzyme. Now, basically, since it's a steroid hormone, it binds to the receptor, nucleus, and basically it changes the gene expression in the target cell. So maybe the ovary. One of the target cells is the ovary, because we all know about bones. But now we also know the target cell, the genomic activity is changed by vitamin D. When we know 80% come from the sun, we never go to the sun here, and a little bit 20% come from the food, and basically all these are coming into the body in different sources. The receptor has been identified not only in calcium regulating tissues such as intestines, skeleton, parathyroid gland, but also in many other reproductive organs like ovary, particularly granulosa cells, uterus, placenta, testis, hypothalamus, and also pituitary. Now, when we know that sunlight, etc., goes to the skin, the liver, kidney, bone, intestines, etc., and are also excreted, let's understand something on calcium homeostasis and bone metabolism. I think we have understood long back, but we know that we, all these can be interpolated into a reproductive system. Interestingly, the non-classical vitamin D effects are connected to reproductive system, ovaries, especially the steroidogenesis, follicular genesis, endometrium for implantation, and of course, testis for androgen synthesis, etc., and also immune modulation. So lots of role even in the placenta because I'm not touching upon recurrent pregnancy losses and preeclamps and so on, because vitamin D also has a role in obstetrics. Now, understanding vitamin D is important because the active form, as I mentioned, called as calcitrol, has many roles in the woman, especially in the reproduction, and also in the man for reproduction. But bound to its receptor, as I mentioned just now, they control, it controls certain genes in the granulosa cells and the follicle, and it basically, it produces estrogen. So when it binds to the receptors, there's a role in follicular genesis because it produces estrogen. Vitamin D plays an important role in estrogen production thereby, and it regulates the biosynthesis through the direct regulation of the aromatase gene, maintaining extracellular calcium hemostasis. The active form has many reasons to talk about. I think I'm going back the same way. Okay. Now, once you look at the chart there, it's a little small, but we know all the other, have, other areas have been discussed in the last several years, but nobody spoke about reproduction and health and vitamin D. So steroidogenesis is a very important aspect of vitamin D, either supplementation or maybe natural vitamin D. But interestingly, it alters the immune system, which has been proved scientifically. So what's the normal level? The normal level is more than 30 nanogram per ml, but 21 to 29 is insufficient, but less than 20 is definitely deficient. So somebody having less than 20, I think we should supplement vitamin D. Why? We'll understand in the next few slides. It alters the anti-mullerian hormone. That's interesting. Dr. Padma Rekha said beautifully about AMH and also certain bone protein. And of course, we also heard about vasculature and interesting from Praveen. But I think AMH can be altered by vitamin D. It also alters FSH sensitivity. 
and it also produces extra progesterone from the corpus luteum and also the release. Hence, indicating a possible physiological role of vitamin D in ovarian follicular development and also luteinization. AMH regulates the development of early pre antral and antral follicles as told by Dr. Padma Rekha. And it's, she also said it's one of the most reliable markers other than age. The promoter of AMH gene seems to be connected to vitamin D. That's interesting. The vitamin D response element and vitamin D upregulation of anti-mullerian hormone produced in the cultured prostate cells has been proved in some literature. Vitamin D is therefore a potential regulator of anti-mullerian hormone concentration in the blood. Uh, lots and lots of studies. I've just picked up four studies for you. The level of serum AMH has been correlated in 220 patients. The current study suggests that vitamin D status affects persons' AMH levels has been proved by this study. And vitamin D deficiency may need to be considered when AMH levels are low. So we shouldn't push, it, push them away by saying they're for donor egg. As Padma mentioned, there is still hope for these people who have got a borderline AMH and may be low, why not supplement vitamin D and wait for some more time and repeat AMH because nobody has said the last word. Since I've been preparing this talk for the last few days with the help of my residents who are helping me a lot, we realize another study was there, is published now in 2012 on 91 patients. The deficiency of the enzyme basically the pre-calcitrol uh, portion was an independent predictive parameter of clomiphene citrate stimulation outcome in terms of follicular development and pregnancy. Results suggest a substantial role of vitamin D also in polycystic ovarian disease and infertility management. Prospective core study and another study published in 2010 on 84 infertile women who underwent in vitro fertilization program they determined the same 25 OHD levels in the follicular fluid after the oocyte aspiration of infertile women undergoing IVF. The conclusion of the study was women with higher vitamin D level in their serum and follicular fluid have significantly more cumulative pregnancies following IVF and embryo transfers because some of them may be frozen embryo transfers and so on. Of course, we, very, we really cannot attribute it to one aspect because we all know IVF is a whole story of laboratory and ovarian stimulation and how we do the performance of the techniques. But I think there's a little additional feather in the cap would be to understand this physiology. A potential benefit of vitamin D supplementation on treatment success in infertile patients who underwent IVF was proved in this particular study. Another study in 2014, a prospective cross-sectional study of those with 20 nanogram and more than 20 nanogram was 154 in the group one and 181 in group two were studied. The conclusion was pregnancy rates were 20% and 31%. That means those who had more than 20 nanogram had 31% compared to 20% in this small study. I probably it's interesting to study a lot more and do probably cross-sectional study and so on. Hence, group of women with higher serum levels of more than 30 had the highest chance of pregnancy according to this particular study. Another study uh, also found the same. They found there were higher vitamin D levels with uh, who developed large dominant follicles and also who became pregnant. Hence, another study also proved vitamin D and reproductive success in women undergoing IVF may have a little role, maybe a big role, a small role, we don't know now, but there is some role still. But implantation, probably, I feel vitamin D, we have no idea about implantation. If you knew that, we'd have 100% success. I always tell my patients, they'll come and tell all of us, you claim 40%, 60%, 30%, but why not 100%? I said because we don't know about implantation. So, because vitamin D may be one of the supplementing factor, they have a potent anti-proliferative uh, deficiencies patients, immunomodulator with a good vitamin D, influences implantation through, once again, immunomodulation, 
and regulation of specific target genes associated with implantation. This gave me an idea to do a small work on recurrent pregnancy losses with my resident. We compared uh, recurrent pregnancy losses by giving and not giving and so on. It's still ongoing study. We have not yet found any difference really in recurrent and non-recurrent kind of groups, but maybe we, it was not statistically proved because we have a very strict statistician group with us. They will not allow us to publish until we go through their statistical, uh, I, thought, I, I, would, I would say probably a clearance. So we are still not sure. But clinically, we did find some improvement in these kind of patients. However, proper implantation basically is seen whenever placenta expresses all the components of vitamin D signaling, like protein encouragement or release, basically regulation and so on will go on, increases expression in the first trimester of pregnancy also, and we realize all this put together, the vitamin D3 would help us in upregulating endometrial expression transcription factor, which has been proved in certain of these scientific research, and basically they all initiate the process of implantation. Immunomodulation is one of the main areas in supporting pregnancy in anyone who wants to continue or who, want, who wishes to continue because immunomodulation is one of the nature of implantation and basically once again is connected to partly vitamin D because implantation tolerance has been proved to be modulated by administration of vitamin D since regulation of cytokine production by natural killer cells as well as the T cell function has been modulated by administration of vitamin D. And we all know successful pregnancy is basically a good balance between Th1 cell and Th2 cell, which has been proved to be upregulated by vitamin D. To conclude, vitamin D is critical for the maintenance of bone health. We all know, we all knew that long back. But we now know it imposes multi-system regulatory effects that modulates overall well-being and health. A growing body of literature suggests that vitamin D may impact reproductive functions. Given its safety, accessibility, and ease of administration of vitamin D supplementation could be the most cost-effective therapy to improve public health and for reproduction. Thank you very much.